Crossroads Media. Maybe Carter Hart should be eating bad fish every single night. I don't know. The guy was outrageous out there, making big saves with his blocker. Martin Nook wide open right in front of the blue paint. Here's a pad that comes out of nowhere. Huge stops early on. And what I loved about this team as they won their third straight road game with, by the way, a disastrous power play. They're beating up on good teams away from their own building. And when you're supposed to have the advantage, they're operating at like a 7% clip. It could be even worse than that. I'm just spitballing off the top of my head. It's gross how bad they are. It doesn't make sense how they can win games like this and be efficient when you can't score on special teams. Yet they are. And it's amazing. But what I love most about this one in particular in Carolina, finally you beat this franchise. But when they scored their goals, one minute into a period. One minute to go in the period. There's so much to say about when you start a fresh 20 or a new 20, or excuse me, the 20 is about to end and you go back into the locker room. It changes the mentality fully. It changes where the other team sits, where you sit, the aggressive level, the, ah, damn it, now we're down two. It goes so far into the mental aspect of the game. That's why my coaches growing up, it would always be stressed. First two minutes, last two minutes of a period, there needs to be more of a focus. There needs to be more of an emphasis because it's a major time for a swing. So Owen Tippett lights the lamp a minute and 50 in. All right, you scored 19 minutes and two seconds in to the first period. You're up 2-0. Being up 1-0 and 2-0, come on now. Carolina has a different sense of urgency touching the ice for period number two when it's a one-goal deficit or a two-goal deficit. What a greasy, solid dub, though, man. And the way that this team has been putting together good hockey, different guys in and out of the lineup. John Tortorella getting the most out of Morgan Frost lately. So for everyone bickering that Tortorella should have had him in earlier, or what you can say is, well, hold on, John Tortorella is actually doing his job by pushing certain buttons and then having Morgan Frost take the ice again and then succeeding He doesn't just be an asshole just to be an asshole. I know that some may think he just wants to be, but no, there's reasons behind it. It's methodical. He plays the game, and part of that is self-assess. Yeah, you should be, in theory, someone who's scoring and someone who's producing and putting up points on the stat sheet. You've been scratched. Do something about it when I put you back in the lineup. And now he picks up an assist on the first goal. What a release by Tippett. It really starts with Belpedio in the neutral zone, picking off a pass, joining the rush. And then I actually think he had something to do with screening the goalie as he went towards the net there because it wasn't anything spectacular from Tippett. It was quick. It was hard. We know he has that level of release. But when you get away in, in front of the eyes and you take away the eyesights, I should say, uh, of the goalie, man. It's it's massive. That's the difference. All right, so we'll continue to talk about it. The Flyers are now over 500, which is awesome. I know not a lot of fans probably tuned in because Sixer Celtics were on at the same exact time, but I'm not missing the way that this team is competing. I'm not missing the way that this team is moving the puck around the ice, all right? It's must-watch television for me. What else is must, though, in my life? is HelloFresh. My wife was salvating because of what I made for dinner over the last three or four nights, and it's all because of HelloFresh. Truly, it's not me. They make it so simple, and when I tell you that the meals, they get delivered right to your doorstep, there's over 40 recipes to choose from every single week, and it's pre-portioned. So here's a card that comes in the package, and it tells you step-by-step. It's six steps long. You just follow the recipe. It's all pre-portioned, and it's all... uh, weighed out and you don't need to do anything except for okay rip open the bag of this okay let's pour that into here let's preheat the oven to 400 bada bing bada boom it takes five minutes to prepare the food 
15 to 20 minutes to cook it, and then you have something so beautiful, so tasty, and something different too, because we all go through the motions sometimes where you're cooking the same exact thing Monday through Friday. It gets boring. It's stale. It's vanilla. There's nothing new. Well, first off, this is so good, and I mean so good. You'd be a fool not to give it a try, and if you click the link down below in the description, HelloFresh.com slash 50 Broads, you will receive 50% off plus free free shipping. That's code 50 Broads for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. But man, you just so much creativity involved that normally you don't get because you get stuck into your standard recipes that you eat every single week. That's not the case here. So make sure you join the HelloFresh family. How about TK Shift? Huh? Well, TK shift, and then he gets left wide open in front of the slot. You get a puck through from the blue line, and he's wide open redirecting it. And I thought he was going to net one earlier, short side wrist shot, and it, it was a nice save. I'm like, damn, that's where TK can snipe. And even if it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of space, he delivers it right on the money. But it's okay, because TK will have a massive shift later on. And bold strategy there, Carolina. Hey, Brindy, Brindy, you want to do some research and tell your team that this guy already has nine goals on the season? So then thank you for the 10th, right? He reaches double digits. Hey, Brindy, thanks, man. Thanks for the defensive laps. And he's left wide open. There wasn't anybody near him within 10, 20 feet of him. Dude, he's their best goal scorer. He's literally the guy that when he's on the ice, you say, don't lose sight of him. Don't let him have a ton of room to operate. Don't let him get shots off. Yet, he's just relaxing. He could have put his feet up and taken a 15-minute snooze and redirected that puck before somebody got close to his body. What an awesome 2 nothing lead to have. And then, of course, here's Paling. Here's another guy that in and out of the lineup, not as much as Morgan Frost, but in and out of the lineup, and Sean Walker makes plays, but Paling in front of the net, buries one 3 nothing. you snag their soul. It sucks because... Now, Tony D'Angelo had an awesome assist for their first and only goal of the game. It probably should have never happened, though, if the Flyers just executed better on their rush the other way seconds before. Whether they tried to get too cute, move the puck, let's rip it. Let's fire some shots. Let's keep that going. Let's let's try and continue to produce offensively. You try and do too much, and then the other team gets a break the other way. A really filthy pass by Tony D, and it's in the back of your net. So, you know, that's just the little things that you got to realize. If we keep it simple, we keep it basic, we we take what we're given instead of trying to do too much, trying to be a little cute in a certain spot. Well, sometimes that backfires in this league. Uh, I got to give this team a ton of credit, though. Blocking shots, 30 block shots, getting in front of pucks, eating rubber. Right, you're you're watching guys limp off the ice because they're in pain. You're seeing the boys on the bench banging their sticks, yipping, yapping because they love the boys selling their body for for the for the, for the fellas, man. I mean, there's just nothing like it, and this team is buying into that now. Of course, if you don't, then John Tortorella is going to have you sitting and watching, and you'll be experiencing something totally different than being on the ice. So you have to, or else your playing time will diminish. But they're bought in, and that matters right now. Bobby Brink out of the lineup again. I'm going to keep it the same way I've kept it, even with Morgan Frost. I don't care. If the team's playing like this, and guys are doing well when they get slotted back in, maybe it's time for Forster. Because I've never seen a guy who has the ability to score as much as he can, and, and he just... I don't know, trying to do too much. He's falling apart mentally. He's clearly not thinking the game the right way because every time he's even close to scoring, he, he, he botches it, he'll miss the net. It's problematic, and he's getting good chances to play with good players. And to this point, they are 7-6-1, and one, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. What's that? Is that 14 games? 
14 games into the season, Tyson Forster can't score, can't buy one to save his life. I think it might be time to get him out of there and throw Bobby Brink in. But that's where John Tortorella reads the room with the fragileness of it all. Scratching, paling, fine. Maybe he thinks highly of Morgan Frost and knows if I scratch him more for more than half of our first 13 games, 12 games, I think he's got what it takes to handle it. Now, maybe Tyson Forster right now is so broken and so uh, discombobulated that now's not the right time. Just because others get removed from the lineup and Bobby Brink is asked to watch from the stands, it doesn't mean everyone is, and you have to get a sense of where each individual player is. You could sell me that with Forster. You keep plugging away. Keep putting him in the lineup, putting him in the lineup, putting him in the lineup. Things will start to turn. It just takes one. Now, we've been saying that for weeks, and we've been saying that for games, and plenty of times afterwards go, still? No? Again? Scoreless? What are we doing? How? The power play? You think maybe? You have an extra man? Please? But no one can score. Cam Atkinson, Couturier, TK, even the best of the best, the most polished pros can't get anything going. No life, no momentum on the peeper. It makes me sad. It really does. Uh, But with Brink, hey, if the team is producing, then you keep going. When Frost was sitting, if the team's producing, you keep going. When it's his time again, fine. He hit a wall. It wasn't as sexy as it was the first handful of games. And everyone who gets slotted in, for the most part, does good. So, someone has to sit. Now, next is probably Zamula. And Tortorella made that clear in the third period. He had some bad turnovers. Mark Stahl, Ristolainen. Where's Ristolainen fit in if Sean Walker and Belpedio? I might be the biggest Belpedio fan in the world. Sign me up for Belpedio to be lifting the Stanley Cup in spring. Swear to God, I love that. Are you kidding me? Belpedio? We're watching Belpedio join the rush. <laughs> it's just amazing. What else is amazing is my friends at TickPick. All right. And they have the best price guaranteed out there. Their ticket prices will beat any of their major competing marketplaces. And they're so confident about this that they guarantee it. If you find the same seats elsewhere at a better price than TickPick, they give you 110% of the price difference in form of TickPick credit. And it's all upfront pricing. So you don't have to worry about doing the math to prepare for how how much extra you plan on spending on top of the listed price on other sites because the price you see on TickPick is the price you pay at checkout, period, end of story. So down below is a link. If you click that link, TickPick.com, my, my, my code, excuse me, is already activated with that link. And you will receive $10 off of your purchase when getting tickets if you spend over $99 to go to a Flyers game, to watch them play live at the Wells Fargo Center, to watch Nick Nurse, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, or hell, maybe even Jalen Hurts if you want to go to the link. My point is, grab a family member, grab a significant other, grab your kids, your family, and Tick Pick is saying, we'll give you a push. We'll give you an extra free 10 bucks off to help get you there so you can experience this live and really have some fun for a night down in South Philly. Don't be a fool. Get yourself to a game today. And yeah, man, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Carter Hart, 31 saves. Carter Hart, the blocker save. I love the first period blocker save. It's great. Okay, let's read some text messages. I kind of want to make it bigger. I feel old. I'm squinting. Oh, no, that's that's the wrong button. I'm trying to see my screen from where I am as if I'm 800 feet away. I'm, I'm two feet away from my computer screen, but I guess I'll zoom in. Hey, Broads, I'm wondering what jersey you're going to wear to the parade this year. Seriously, Carter Hart is a stud. TK and Tippett are incredible, and Walker has been surprisingly good. Our power play, though, is downright embarrassing, and our power play coach needs to be fired. I mentioned that in a previous pod. Rocky, how does Rocky keep his job? At this rate, you can seriously consider moving on from him and bringing in a new voice because this is tragic. I've never seen anything so bad in my life in regards to having one more man than the other team on the ice and still being piss poor. 
I can't get over it. But this texter continues to say, I get more excited for a goal possibility during the penalty kill than I do the power play. Yep, yep, I've been there too, and I still feel that way currently. I can't wait for Cutter Gauthier and Matt May Meechkoff on this team. Well, Cutter Gauthier can score from distance, man. He has that wicked one-timer just on the opposite side of Alexander Ovechkin, and it seems to be automatic. So I hope to God that that can help out this power play down the road. If not, then we have some serious issues, but it'll be okay. That's down the road, though. Down the road, we'll see those guys, and the power play should flourish there. Even when you play San Jose, I'm seeing a power play goal. How, how, how can teams like that with barely NHL talent on the ice actually move the puck around and look better than you? And, and, the, and the answer is very simple to this, because it's not hard. So then how can someone like the Flyers, who's above 500 right now, and there's a big enough sample size, how can they not? How can they not? Imagine what this team could be if they do, right? All jokes aside, if this is what they're doing when they're awful, they could be three or four games over 500 right now if they could just pop one in five on four. That's no joke. That's serious. It's hard to be where they are right now without the power play. It's crazy that they're not four games under 500. You mentioned Tippett. Tippett's been excellent. Tippett's starting to score. Good, good. Let's get that pace going, baby. Let's keep that pace up. Let's get back on track to what we thought you could have been before the season began. Sam texts in and says, Yo, bros, I forgot to ask you this on the Ask Anything pod about Barky. I see the kid is lighting it up. When will we see him with the Flyers? Maybe you can add this to your Flyers pod. Great win tonight. Love watching this team. Well, if you're not enjoying watching this team, then something's wrong with you. The Barky thing, I don't know when he'll be up. Uh, He's playing for the London Knights currently in the OHL. And so far, every single time I see some of the people who I follow on Twitter that cover some of the prospects, every night, two goals, three goals, hat trick, three points, two points. He is truly scoring at a crazy rate. He's on pace in 68 games in the Ontario Hockey League to score almost 50 goals. He's on pace to score 47 goals and 101 points. Keep in mind, in those major junior leagues, there are a lot of triple-digit points scored sometimes. Like, there are some high-scoring leagues, high-scoring players in some of the major junior stuff. You can debate the Q compared to the dub, compared to the O, and all that stuff. But ultimately, you score 50 goals in juniors. I even said the same thing about the kid who's playing with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms right now, who was at the top of the league in the Q last year, I believe it was. And um, his name's escaping me. Oh, Jen Drone. Jen Drone. Yeah. Uh, what's his first name? Alexi Jen Drone. Yes. Me trying to add the French for some reason, but that's the only way I know how to say it when I see it. When you have that type of noise surrounding you, it's very hard for me not to get excited. I don't know about where he's at in in regards to being polished yet, though. Uh, You know it takes a while for these NHL prospects to finally become a force and finally become something at the National Hockey League level. Look at what they're doing with Cutter Gauthier last year after his freshman year at Boston College. I was surprised he returned back to Boston College. If they're handling him like that, someone like Barky... You know, but you never know. When guys take jumps, sometimes it's when you don't expect it. Sometimes it just randomly happens. It's, oh, yeah, Barky's dipping into his bag and, and scoring at will at, at the AHL level. Let's call him up, right? Who thought Walker Belpedio? Now, granted, Walker's been in the NHL. It's different. I don't know. Think of the Kings, though. Think of that trade. Hey! Take that Cal Peterson contract. Here's Sean Walker. Sean Walker with the Kings was there for five years, minus 37. He had 16 goals in five years. 16 goals in five years. Belpedio, already up to seven points in 16 games in the orange and brown. I'm sorry, did I say Belpedio? I'm sorry. I meant Walker. Did I say Belpedio? I don't know. I told you, he's my favorite player in the NHL now, so it's always on the mind. Rob texts in and says, can Mark Stahl be any worse than Zamula? Uh, yeah, he could be, yeah. Yeah, I I think that Mark Stahl can be bad and just as bad. 
as Zamula. Doesn't mean I'm unwilling to give it a try at this rate. You can't keep putting someone out there who's flipping the puck out of play and this and that. I just feel when when he looks uncomfortable, he looks uncomfortable. Zamula, that is. So could it be worse? Yes. You still go to Mark Stahl, though, when it's time. And I guess the expectation is Mark Stahl will be available pretty soon here as Vegas comes to town and they have a back-to-back. A lot of hockey so far in this little November run they got going here. But we got a weekend back-to-back. Ivan Provorov makes his return on Sunday. It's a weird 5.30 start at the Wells Fargo Center. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Should Brink return to the lineup? Isn't part of rebuilding... Tortorella playing the young kids? I will not understand this until I am blue in the face. I got no problem with it. I I don't know. (sighs) Okay, I, I have two different thoughts on this. Part of the reason why I like to tune into Overdrive, which is a sports talk radio show up in Toronto, is I love their passion so much about hockey. How we discuss the Eagles and the Sixers and the Phillies during a postseason run is how they talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. And when I say that, they'll nitpick the lineup every day, just like we nitpick Rob Thompson's lineup and say, oh, he should be batting seven, this guy should be batting five, this guy should be batting one. Isn't that part of being a sports fan and sports talk and entertainment is debating things like that. So part of me goes, well, that's that's why we do this. We are passionate about the teams. We have opinions. We stress those opinions. So that's part of our love. That's sitting on one shelf. The other shelf says, well, you're always going to bitch about someone. Because if it's not Brink, it's Forrester. What about Forrester? Well, if it's not Forrester, it's Frost. Well, how come Frost? If it's not Frost, then I guess the only guys that you would, I, I, I guess, in theory, be okay with is someone like Paling. Because, well, why do you need these fourth-line grinders? And what's the purpose of a DeLaurier? And what's the purpose of some of these fourth-line guys that you, you can break up but you won't break up? I guess that would be the only thing. But as you saw, Paling scored a big goal. Cool. Penalty gives you a 3 nothing lead separation. If it's only 2 nothing when Carolina scores, now it's 2-1. It's a totally different feel. And I've seen this team, who's very fragile at times, in the third period with three minutes to go, start to get flustered. And then the other team, we saw it with Vegas. We saw it in Vegas with Vegas. They come back and, and poof, poof, a feel-good game becomes zero points or a feel-good game becomes one point. And I know some of you might be screaming that that's a good thing, that you want to see this team only get one point because you prefer to lose and tank it. And I don't want to. I don't want You know the Buffalo Sabres? You know how many times they've been drafting in the top of the league? You know how many times that they've been going after young kids left and right? What has that, what has that gotten them? Right? Even Connor McDavid, who I want on my team in a second. They have dry sight and McDavid, and they can't figure it the hell out. If I can get my team to compete and give us, even if it's a long shot at it, and right now with their youth and their young players and learning how to play in this league for as long as they can be in it, I want them to be in it. Keep winning. Keep winning. So paling Pete in the lineup and scoring, I value that too. Someone's got to sit it might cross the line, and I thought Tortorella crossed the line with Frost, but he crossed the line with Frost, and then he got the most out of Frost. That's why he crosses the line, is to get the most out of the kid, and it worked. He answered. It's just how it goes with Torch. You got to know that when you sign up for it. Speaking of signing up, you got to sign up with my friends over at my bookie. okay? This is the wrong read. This is last week's read. Let me get the new read. Maybe I should be more professional. Skip the arguments with Uncle Dave on Thanksgiving and focus on what really matters. That's good food, boosted odds, and hitting those turkey day parlays. Picture this, not just winning games, but tuning in, excuse me, but turning every second into a potential win. With my bookie, you can stream the games and live bet them and turn any game day into a payday. Ready to up your game? Sign up today and make your first deposit with promo code BRODES for a sweet deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code BRODES to claim your bonus. This isn't just a promo code. It's your secret weapon to get the extra edge on the house. The best part is you don't need to be a sports whiz to win at my bookie. You can cash in on everything from politics to your favorite shows and then some. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with bu- my bookie. Make sure you sign up down below. The information is all in the description. 
Mark in North Philly says, what's wrong with this power play? I don't know, Mark. I don't know. He continues. Block shots. The boys. Furta. <laughs> oh, Furta. I haven't heard Furta in quite some time. Yeah, hey, Furta. Furta boys is real. Uh, you can see it on the face of Nick Sealer when he's on the bench after some pain. He's in some agony. He ate one. Furta, right? And the boys are smacking him on the helmet. The assistant coaches are giving him the shoulder taps and giving him a couple shoulder taps as he's putting the water bottle in his face, getting some, some fresh water. Those days I miss and I don't miss at the same time. That was so me. I'm blocking shots on the penalty kill in practice for ice time. Actually... My freshman year in college, I took one, one, oh, we had the guy, Mike Davis. All right, he was our captain. He had a mean one-timer. I'm the dope that blocks it with my hand in practice. My, I look down, my thumb is just dangling from my hand. Uh, well, that's how I had to get in the lineup. I had to do things like that to earn my ice time. The problem is it knocked me out for half the season. Oh, those were the glory days. So I miss it, and I don't miss it. I do miss the energy it provides because there's nothing better than hearing everyone on the bench react when you eat a tough one T and you send it out of the zone and you got to watch the power play regroup. You bust your ass to the bench for a quick 30-second shift. The next line goes out. It's a hell of a feeling. It's a hell of a feeling. It really is. It really is. All right, everybody, I love you all to death. Flyers, baby, three in a row. Three in a row for the orange and black on the road, too. See what they do against Vegas, a little Saturday matinee. They haven't done well with Saturday afternoon games, so I don't know if it's the lack of their uh, their pregame stuff because it's 7 o'clock games. You got more time to go through what you eat before a day, your pregame nap, your pregame skate, uh, the way you get your body prepared, foam rolling, all that good stuff. You have less time to do it. You get thrown into the fire at 1 o'clock. They haven't had good showings. It was the game against Ottawa in Ottawa for their home opener. They sucked. And then it was a game at the Wells Fargo Center against the Anaheim Ducks. They sucked. But I got to give them a lot of credit for them to respond to that San Jose loss with three straight road wins. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, if it took a loss to a bad team to get inspired like that, whatever. I don't care how it happens. Make it happen. And they sure did. All right, everybody. Love you to death. We'll be talking soon. I'll see you on the next one.